Welcome to the Maps for Kids Showcase. I'm your host, Tierney Tennant. The City of Oklahoma City is more than 10 years into the Maps for Kids plan, which was developed and approved by you, Oklahoma City residents, to improve education in Oklahoma City and the surrounding areas. On today's show, we're going to take you inside Belle Isle Enterprise Middle School in Northwest Oklahoma City. The school is home to the Bulls and serves students in grades 6 through 8. This school has strong community support and dedicated teachers who work together to meet the needs of the more than 450 students who walk the halls. And joining us today is Ms. Lynn Keller. She is the principal of Belle Isle Enterprise Middle School. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. I know this is your first time, so we're so glad that you're here. Thank you. I know a lot of people are not familiar with the enterprise model, so tell us the history and how it works. Enterprise schools are, are unique to Oklahoma City Public Schools. I don't think you find them anywhere else. And they were developed by some school leaders before there was a charter school law in Oklahoma. And those school leaders wanted to give some of their schools some of the attributes of charter schools. Mm -hmm. So we are actually an Oklahoma City Public School, but we have some of the freedoms and, uh, that the charter schools have as well. And you use that to your advantage, which is great. Absolutely. What are some of the other benefits of having an enterprise school other than just the flexibility? And how closely does your enterprise board, because you have one, work mm -hmm. with the day-to-day -day operations of the school? Absolutely. Probably the most exciting thing about being an enterprise school is having a site-based budget. And we receive a per-pupil allocation, uh, and we manage that budget on site. And I, and I think that the closer to the students, you can make those kinds of decisions has a bigger impact on their achievement. The board is uh, mostly parents and some community people and they meet once a month for a formal meeting mm -hmm. just like the Oklahoma City School Board does in that kind of same format and they make decisions on uh, personnel, on curriculum, just about any aspect of the school. And I've been to your school several times and you just wrapped up the renovation process so tell me how did it go? I think it actually went smoother for us than some places. It, it's disruptive, teachers have to move, there's equipment, things everywhere. But we were fortunate that they built a new wing of classrooms first, and then we moved into that wing. Uh, some teachers did have to make two moves, but I, I think it was an easier process on us than some schools. I want to take a moment to just really thank your staff because I came by one day when there were like six <laughs> people in the office on yes. ladders working on the roof, That's teachers right. were answering the phones, and so your staff has been pretty incredible through this process. Oh, absolutely. Which They're focused on kids and not on what's going on around them. Well, you had a little bit of a hand in the design, so what was the number one must-have in this newly renovated school of yours? Um, enough classrooms to take the place of our temporary buildings. And uh, we have had temporary buildings for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of when the MAPS process started, our enrollment was not as high as it was currently. Mm -hmm. And so we were shorted one classroom. And so the architects were fantastic and did a lot of changes with the design to make sure that we had enough classrooms to get rid of all those temporary buildings. So is that the number one place where you use that space is for classrooms or was there any, you know, computer labs that were added to it or what was oh, yeah. the number one the number one thing that you were able to add with space? To me it was the science labs. And uh, because we have science teachers that teach kids how to be scientists and not just science and they do so many hands-on experiments and they were teaching in classrooms with maybe one working sink if they were lucky mm -hmm. and so now they have these beautiful science labs that have experiment stations where we can have computers, water, gas, air, it's fantastic. Now am I mis mistaken but the entrance moved, correct? Yes, okay, yes. So we have a real entrance now. <laughs> Before you didn't have one. And no. some security measures that still make it secure and friendly at the same time. So talk about that new entrance and why you decided to move it. Uh, actually, the entrance has always been on Villa, but the school was built as an elementary school back when kids walked to school, and so there was no way to drive up to the entrance. So people actually just came through the cafeteria to come into the school, which is not, you know, your thing you really want to shine off. So now we have this gorgeous new entrance where and parking and a drive in front, so friendly to parents. They really like it. They can drive in the front, come right in the office, and get the help that they need. Any other cosmetic changes that you're especially proud of? Oh, there are so many. We were, we're very, I'm very grateful for all that MAPS did for us. It just mm -hmm. transformed our school. But we have a beautiful new media center. Uh, our abandoned orchestra room was remodeled, enlarged, and uh, storage and office added. Uh, our art room got a room for the kill. 
it's just really transformed our building. Let's talk a little bit about the computer lab, which is very impressive. Yes. So what is it that you love most about that space? The windows. Oh, it is. It's <laughs> the great windows. windows. Uh, we had lots of classrooms with no windows. Uh, and so, yeah, all the new windows are beautiful. Uh, it's bigger. Uh, there's room for the smart board. Um, and all of our sixth graders take computer and then it's an elective for seventh and eighth grade. So it's it's a vital part of our school. Well, congratulations on your new building. It is amazing, and I encourage everyone, if they have the opportunity, to go out and check it out, the shiny new floors and everything. It looks really, really good. Absolutely. And the cosmetics of the building are not the only aspect that Mrs. Keller can brag about. Bell Isle is an award-winning school with an array of extracurricular activities. We're going to discuss the accolades in just a bit. Oh, but first, we want to say congratulations to Heather Meldrum. She's a fifth grade teacher from Stanley Helpful Academy at Western Village. She has been named the 2013-2014 OKCPS District Teacher of the Year. She will spend the year traveling the district inspiring teachers and will represent OKCPS in the state competition. Again, congratulations Heather and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As you know, on May 20th, Moore, Oklahoma was hit by a powerful tornado that destroyed two elementary schools and claimed the lives of 24 people. Many Oklahoma City Public School District students and staff, they held fundraisers and spent sent cards to show support for the victims of the tornado. We're looking at some of the images from Coolidge Elementary, Johnson Elementary, Jackson Middle School, and U.S. Grant High School. Of course, our thoughts are with the Moore Public School family as they move forward and all those affected by the horrific tornado. And right now, we're shining a spotlight on Belle Isle Middle School. On today's show, we're joining me Joining me now is Miss Linda Kerr, an eighth grade teacher at Belle Isle Enterprise Middle School. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for inviting me. And you're pretty pink, one Thank of my you. favorite colors. The school, as many people may not know, has been named a Blue Ribbon School. So let's talk yes. about what it takes to get that designation. To um, be designated as a Blue Ribbon School, the state nominates you, mm -hmm. and then um, you're given an application. And a lot of it has to do with your test scores, mm -hmm. as well as the culture of your school. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a pretty lengthy application that has to be filled out and um, sent to um, the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. And they determine whether you're elected or not to be qualified as a blue ribbon school. So. Um, high test scores and your culture and your community of your school have a lot to do with it. Well, congratulations so, yes. to the students and the staff there at Bell because you all have won it more than once. Yes, so. this is the second time we've won. So oh, great very, job. And you are only uh, nominated every five years, so it's a very big honor. Great job. Yeah. We are very proud of you for that. And I know your school offers electives such as orchestra, yes. but you also strive in science and math. Mm -hmm. and math is your area of yes, expertise, not mine. I was an English person, <laughs> but I probably needed you as a teacher. Tell us about the courses offered for students in regards to math. Okay, so in mathematics, we're kind of, we, uh, the students come in sixth grade and we look at their history of uh, their math education in elementary school and we try and place them uh, dependent on their needs. Mm -hmm. And so we have it set to where our students can go into regular math class and then we have an honors and then an accelerated honors class as well. So um, that's sixth grade. Seventh grade, they are uh, placed into seventh grade math, pre-algebra or algebra one, depending right. on how they're, uh, how they're testing out. And then eighth grade, we uh, tack on geometry as well. So there's pre-algebra, algebra one, and geometry also. And this is middle school students. Mm -hmm. This is extremely mm -hmm. impressive. Yes. So, but we have some very impressive students. So, yeah. And we just try to uh, pattern our program so that we're meeting the needs of all the students. So what strategies do you use to prepare students for high school and then life after high school? We, well, a lot of it has to do with hands-on and trying to incorporate real-world situations into mathematics and show how math is so important 
to um, other subject areas mm -hmm. as well as to everyday life. So, and so we use a lot of, and we, um, I think it was about four years ago, we brought in a new um, program called Math Exploration. Mm -hmm. And that really gives the kids a lot of real world experience on how math is used. Oh, great. In different types of careers and different things like that. So. Well, tell us about the typical Belle Isle Enterprise middle school student. Typical Belle Isle. We would say, the I was asking, bull. <laughs> okay, I was asking some of the teachers before I came and I said, how would you describe a Belle Isle student? They said, well, number one, they are quirky. <laughs> quirky, okay. <laughs> yes. Number two, they all have unique personalities. Okay. So, and to me, they're, they're very bubbly, mm -hmm. very excited to be there, and they really enjoy learning. So, and so knowing that and being an educator just makes me really excited because it tells me that I can plan all kinds of neat stuff and mm -hmm. I want to get them involved in the learning. So, nice yeah. little quirky, bubbly mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. in the hall if you ever go by and visit. Yeah. Any other new programs or initiative? I know you mentioned one regarding mm -hmm. math. Anything else that's on the horizon to meet the needs of the quirky kids? Uh, one thing that we're going to start this year is we're starting a new leadership program. Okay. So, and we're really excited about that. I think the kids will really like that and get involved. And um, we're also kind of discussing within the teams of um, also offering honors program for other core curriculum classes as well. So we're kind of in the process of researching that right now. And we're hoping maybe to get that kicked off next year. Well, thank you so much. Thank Sounds you. Like you all are very, very busy. Yes. Thank you for coming by the show. And I hope you have a relaxing and well-deserved summer, Mrs. Kerr. Thank you so much. Up next, we will chat with another amazing teacher from Belle Isle Enterprise Middle School and discuss some of the great science programs available to students. But first, we want to say congratulations to Alondra Martinez, a senior at Southeast High School. She's been named a Bill Gates Millennium Scholar. She is one of a distinguished group of seniors from across the country who've been selected to receive a full scholarship to the college of their choice. Alondra has selected OU. She'll start there in the fall. And she moved to the United States from Mexico during her third grade year and is the first person in her family to attend college. So congratulations, Alondra, and good luck. We'll be right back. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back. Let's take a moment to congratulate the Douglas High School senior class. This has been a difficult year for the students. In December, the majority of the students were informed that they were lacking the necessary credits and end of instruction exams required to graduate. But after a long, busy, and hardworking semester, more than 80% of the graduating class walked across the stage and received their diploma. Thank you to all the teachers and community members who offered support, and great job to the students who refused to let adversity dictate their future, and for the rest of the students who will be busy this summer working toward their diploma. At this time, I'd like to welcome Dan Covey in his nice, special glasses. I love your glasses. He is a seventh grade teacher at Belle Isle Enterprise Middle School. Thank you so much for being here on Thank the show. Um, if OKC residents visit Belle Isle, what would they see in regards to classroom instruction? You know, I thought about this a lot in terms of like how to answer this question. Okay. And, um, Research you know, and everything. No, I, I, think, I think when you, when you look at, and I, I think my classroom would be a good example of when you walk in, it's not quiet. Um, we're talking a lot, interacting, and in fact, you may even have to walk up to a table to realize that they're actually talking about science because they get kind of rowdy and loud and excited and argue about it and all of that stuff. And the other thing is there won't be any textbooks. Um, oh, really? You know, I, we invest a lot of our time into a curriculum that is very focused on what our kids need. And I think oftentimes the textbook kind of Puts you in a box. Yeah, it puts me in a box too much, and I think and we do so much hands-on, and especially using the new labs and stuff. Um, it's just not. 
I mean, there's so much other stuff out there, and science is changing so constantly that the textbooks can't keep up. It sounds fun and interactive already oh, from your oh, description yeah. of it. Yeah. And I know your colleague, Mr. Buckmaster, who's been yes. on the show before, so you all are all rock star teachers. So. We try. And as a teacher there at Belle Isle, I know you were there during the construction process. How are you able to keep that interactive energy going during the sledgehammers and all of that construction <laughs> and keep the kids focused? Yeah. It was one of those things we had, we started out at the beginning of the year and Ms. Keller sat us down and said, look, there's going to be a big mess of stuff. It's going to be confusing. There's going to be loud noises and all of that stuff. And people have told her again and again, hey, when your schools go through this stuff, your scores are going to go down. And for us at Belle Isle, we have so much pride in how well our students do. We were like, no, that's not going to be us. Mm -hmm. And so we just buckled down and we had a, we had a saying that says, you know, um, we're, we, we're all we've got and we all we, we're all we need. And that's what we focused on. I and mean, we do what every other public school teacher does is even when power's going off and internet's going down, we, we know that we have a commitment to make sure that those kids don't miss out just because of what we don't have. Um, and still get the same education that we would always give regardless of what's Sounds going on. Sounds very focused and like a team I, effort, I which think is awesome. It definitely is a team. Good deal. How does this renovated building really assist you in preparing students for school and work and life and all of that? Big time for us. Um, you know, two of us come from, uh, from alternative certification. So I worked in research lab and Mrs. Meyer in eighth grade um, worked in blood banking and things wow. like that. And so we come from a perspective of looking at science from a laboratory mm -hmm. type thing. So working in a classroom where my, f my first classroom was small. I mean, we were crowded in there. I was tripping over backpacks. And I had one sink, which worked for like part of one year, mm -hmm. and then it was done after that. And so we were, it was on its way out. Um, and so moving into this new lab, now I got seven stations. Each one has a computer. Each one has gas. Each one has air. Each one has a sink. Um, we don't have to go down to the bathroom to wash hands after doing chemistry labs or doing biology stuff. They can do it, you know, they can do it all right there. And so being able to actually bring the laboratory experience that I wanted them to have and used to like setting up their own labs and preparing their own stuff instead of me having to do it all at the table exactly. and then try to clean it all up. Um, it's just been, it's been great. I mean, I, even now I'm still making the transition to more and more just laboratory stuff and making them discover the science on their own because I actually can now with the labs that we have. I know the taxpayers are happy to know that this process has really given oh, you man. just yeah. just a field of opportunities for those kids. So that's great. Definitely. And I know you guys have a really good parental involvement, good PTA. Why is that so important to now you have the building that's in place, it's giving you everything you need and then having that parental involvement piece? Huge. I mean, honestly, we couldn't do anything that we do um, without our parents. Our parents are super involved. Um, the first thing they do is, is they make sure that our mouths are full of muffins so <laughs> we don't eat the students. Um, and then, you know, I, I look at simple stuff. We have uh, these three festivals we do every year that are tied to our curriculum. So sixth grade does Greek and Roman Ooh. festival. Um, and then in seventh grade, we do War, Peace, and Jazz, which is focused from World War I to World War II. The kids come in costume, they dress up, um, and we have a whole day long uh, doing like games from that time and watching movies from mm -hmm. that time. And just the whole day is, is like, it's like a little miniature, you know, depression, World War I, World War II. I know that sounds sad, but it's No, not, it sounds no, fun too, fine. though, and very No, it's a blast, <laughs> and, we, and we dress up. And one of the things that we have, you know, 15, 20 parents that will come out and not only have they already donated food, um, but they come out and they donate their time to man the games and mm -hmm. stuff at the carnival part of it and pass out the food. So we actually get time to just go and hang out with the kids and have fun with them. Um, especially as it's getting towards the end of the year, we haven't had a lot of that time because we've been so focused on, Absolutely. on just learning and education. And so, you know, getting that opportunity and our parents will jump in anywhere. I mean, things, our drama, our orchestra, band, um, anywhere that we ask them to, to come in, there's, there's always people willing to jump in and help. And then the other aspect is at the end of the day, if, you know, with, with working with individual students, we couldn't get done what we get done in the classroom without being able to call home and contact somebody and mm -hmm. have that backup support at Absolutely. the end of the day to get, make sure things get done. Okay, so. I'm going to give you a little opportunity to brag about your science program a little bit. 
What's one of the most interesting projects or lessons that your kids completed this year? That really is like, you know, I can pat you on the back. You know, we have a ton of, we, we started the, the Oklahoma Engineering Fair three years ago. And the first, and, and this is like, we do our little competition at our school, and then we go to the one at the Science Museum, which is with high school students as well as middle school students. And the first year, I think we maybe won like one award. Mm -hmm. Now in the third year, we won seven awards. Hey, and there's only 21 given out. So That's we're like awesome. winning a third of the awards with middle school students. And we're just to totally proud of our, our kids. I mean, we had a, a student that, that built a toothpick bridge that held over 200 pounds. Wow. Yeah, and we were just, I mean, we're just, we're, it's a chance for us to really just be wowed by our own kids and, and give them the opportunity to compete doing the things that they do best and that's excelling at, you know, at science and math and, and English and, I mean, because they have writing components to it and everything um, at the engineering fair. So kids find ways to get in and they love the competition, especially at the academic level at our school. Well, I have been wowed by you, Ms. Kerr and Ms. Kellert, of course. Thank you all Thank for you. everything you're doing at right. Belle Isle. It sounds extremely um, effective, interesting, fun, and preparing kids for life to yeah. be successful. It's so awesome. thank you for thank what you. you're doing. And thank you for joining us on the Maps for Kids Showcase. This show will air monthly on City Channel 20 and highlight programs, improvements, and partnerships that affect our city schools. For more information on the Maps for Kids project, visit okc.gov. And for more information on Oklahoma City Public Schools, visit okcps.org. We leave you with a few more super senior celebrations from across the school district. Good luck to all of our graduating seniors. We will see you all next time. I'm your host, Tierney Tennant. Thanks for joining us. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk.